Uh, BTCU is uh, what I believe. It, it's not just a fork of Bitcoin. It's it's far from that. I think it's a uh, uh, two or three tiers improvement uh, on the current um, ecosystem of Bitcoin. Uh, we ever most people know Bitcoin as a store value. I think for the most part, even though it was originally designed as a a peer-to-peer e-payment system. But we all know that uh, it has a lot of weaknesses when it comes to that and uh, regarding scaling and uh, block size and and all that. And so BTCU looks to solve a lot of those issues and beyond. And um, one of the things that is that it has the ability to create a decentralized ecosystem uh, through smart contracts. And it's got integrated the EVM, the uh, Ethereum virtual machine, so that uh, we're allowed to tokenize projects as well as do DeFi implementation. And um, something that, Dennis, you probably know a lot about is the smart city and digital currencies for governments around the world. And that right there is something that Bitcoin cannot do. And we all know Ethereum is, um, a a, a lot of times it's kind of haunted by, you know, um, high gas fees and prices and and the scaling issues of Ethereum, even though they are working on it, uh, it's still going to continue to be a problem. So BTCU is another ecosystem for that. Uh, one of the other things that BTCU solves is the um, the mining issues that is related with proof of work. So with Ethereum, it's proof of stake. Um, but in terms of scalability, I think BTCU beats both of those. And um, BTCU has a least proof of stake system, which um, for the mining uh, algorithm, and then also for the validating aspect of it, there's the proof of authority. So we do that through the uh, BTCU, the U stands for ultimatum. So UPOS, ultimatum point of stake. And it is ultimatum proof of stake is a combination of least proof of stake for mining and proof of authority for validation. So it the system itself makes it a very democratic, uh, it's very scalable, and it uh, utilizes a lot less energy than proof of work. So that is one of the huge improvements. Um, and the system itself is uh, based on the reputation of miners and validators. If there's any kind of errors, or issues, maybe I'm getting a little bit too deep into it, but it is uh, based on reputation and it will get replaced. They will get replaced. So um, that is something um, I think for scalability wise, it's, it's a lot more um, transactions per second is much higher. So I think at the base of it, it's uh, 200 transactions per second uh, compared to Bitcoin, which is less than uh, four transactions per second. I believe it's like 3.7 transactions per second so we're already uh, multipliers of of that and um, we're able to to uh, scale ourselves to about 10,000 transactions per second and compare it to something like um, maybe we're familiar with like Visa and MasterCard I believe Visa and MasterCard are about at around 2300 transactions per second and so we are we could be four or five times faster than that so scalability is, is, is awesome. And we also have, you know, there's a lot of um, discussions about uh, privacy coins. Uh, even though we are not a privacy uh, coin, we have the ability at BTCU to make transactions private, uh, and, and which makes it, it's optional. So it's based on the zero coin protocol. And um, whenever a transaction is done on BTCU, you can make it private by transferring it into uh, transforming it into ZBTCU and um, you can split it up into many kind of payments and uh, and then converting that back to BTCU. So that is one way uh, transactions can remain private on BTCU. And lastly, which is still in development, um, is our atomic swaps on BTCU, which will allow for um, communication and interoperability with, uh, with many different networks. And uh, that won't be happening and, or won't be completed until May of probably 2022. So those are kind of the main core things for BTCU. 
And uh, it's it's an amazing project, and we're continually looking for other ways to expand upon that and and uh, making that even better.